so my name is Carl, Carl Brockmeyer. I'm uh, actually German, not from the US. But um, I'm part of the Hyperloop team, and I'm here today to tell you about the Hyperloop, what it is from a technology point of view, how it can change our lives, and actually, because this is a crowdfunding, crowdsourcing event, how we are crowdsourcing that future of transportation. But first off, just to bring everybody on the same page, what is the Hyperloop? I've brought a small video uh, with me, five minutes. I think it's quite relaxing at this time of the day, so enjoy. Slide deck? Great. So um, now that you've seen a little bit about it, um, let me enrich that with just a few slides in addition. Question yourselves. I mean, transportation today, the infrastructure in which we live in, it defines so much of how we live, where we work, how we interact with the people that we love, the friends that we want to meet. But there's just so many things that are still wrong with infrastructure and transportation today. I mean, these are real pictures. This is traffic in LA, pollution in Beijing. I myself lived there for two years. My boy was born there. And you know, we have so many friends who move away of Beijing, not because they didn't like it anymore, but because of pollution. And of course, I mean, traveling just basically sucks. I mean, why do you have to be at the airport two hours in advance, standing in long security lines, huddling with your luggage? Uh, through the airport, um, waiting and waiting and waiting. This is just inefficient. So basically what's happening is, or what we're saying is that transportation hasn't been disrupted in the last hundred years, essentially. But right now, luckily, um, we have an unprecedented opportunity. We want to connect people at the speed of sound. But speed is actually not just uh, the only key thing. I mean, speed will help us you know, to bring people closer together. Because if it doesn't matter if you have, I don't know, if, if you would live, let's take a distance here between Munich and Hamburg, that's a good 600 kilometers. If you could do that commute in half an hour, let's say, then it wouldn't matter where you live and where you work or where you live and go to the opera at night and go back home and be in bed on time, in your own bed. So this is what speed can do. But there's just so many other facts to it. So what I want to focus on today is not that much the technology, but really what the storyline is about. So yes, it needs to be fast, but actually it should also be safe, as we saw before. It has to be efficient. What, what help is the transportation system if it's the fastest, but maybe also the riskiest? Yeah? I mean, what is our risk for appetite in transportation? It's uh, zero, right? So, um, but it's not that much of a game changer. I mean, if instead of 30 minutes I can commute between Hamburg and, uh, and, and Munich, for example, if it's 45, it's still a game changer, right? So how does it work? Just one slide on that, on the technology. Basically, imagine a tube. It's a fully enclosed tube, which is immune to weather. It's immune to obstacles on the tracks. Inside the tube, we create a low-pressure environment. It's a partial vacuum. It's not a perfect vacuum, so don't be afraid. Um, it's actually maybe similar to the air pressure that you would have on flying on high altitudes. This is why planes fly at 10,000 feet high, because the air resistance is just so much lower, and it's so much more energy efficient. But we create that down on Earth. And then inside, we have traveling pods, like passenger capsules, that are magnetically levitated, so no friction. And they are, the propulsion is, again, electromagnetic. So this is the basic system. And all of that technology exists today. So the question is, how can we combine these technologies into an ecosystem and make that work? So it's not that much of a realization problem. It's more of an optimization problem. A small look inside the capsules. Um, there's different designs. You could even imagine corporate capsules. Yeah? You could imagine private capsules. You could imagine sponsorship capsules. But it's not only passengers. Imagine freight. On-time delivery would just have a completely new meaning. So just a small summary. Key technology items here are the pylons. We don't want to build below ground. It's just too expensive. This is why Swiss Metro failed 20 years ago. We want to build above grounds on pylons because it's much more earthquake uh, safe. 
and there's, um, it doesn't need to divide land, so it's less disruptive to the country owners. Tubes is, of course, an essential item. So are the passenger pods, the station designs, and other technologies that we want to use to implement it. But now, enough for the technology and more to the crowdfunding side. We believe that transportation revolution is not just a business, it's not just a corporation, it's actually a movement. And this is how we set up this movement. We have scouted talent over a platform, which is called the Jumpstart Fund, from all over the world to solve today's transportation problems. So basically, we take the platform and we start asking questions. What are the pain points of today's travel? Why is it necessary to carry your luggage for an entire airport, pick it up on the other airport, haul it into the next taxi, and bring it back to your hotel room so the entire distance between your home where you pack the luggage and at the final destination, you didn't add value to your luggage. You didn't need it. So it's a pain point of travel today. How can you solve that? That's a, that's a type of question that comes up. And that's picked up by the community that's discussed by an outer circle. Then we have actually people in the community who don't only really pose problems, but who say, hey, well, this is a question that I actually have expertise on, that I, I would be prepared to contribute. And as such, we now have actually more than 520 professionals who joined an inner circle as a contributor, who signed an agreement that where in exchange for stock options, they would grant at least a minimum of 10 hours of their time per week to work on the project. And this way, what we enable is, you know, what's, what's the problem that any company has, a new startup? Of course, it's resource. So you have a nice business plan, and you say, well, to start up, I need employee number one. I might need employee number two. It's going to cost me money. We took the approach from another way. Well, yes, it cost me money, but money is just means to get to the people. So we took the shortcut and went to the right people directly. Because what good is, is it if I start chasing the best available people on the market who I can try to hire in? What we want is the best able people who, no matter where they are, can come and contribute and work on this project. So in this way, actually, more than 60,000 man hours were contributed to the project, which didn't cost Hyperloop Transportation Technologies a single investor dollar. So this is the power of what we have created. So this is a short picture of it. So as I said, we have a core team now. I mean, of course, it's a, I mean, we have a, it's a corporated structure out of the community. The community gave it a name. The community chose a name for the corporation. And we have a core team that, I mean, sets up the legal structure, the organization behind it, that does uh, a front face to, to, the, to the press and, of course, to investors. But around that, we have the collaborators that I just mentioned and an inner circle. And outside of that, we have the larger community contributing, posting questions, items, but also posting solutions. And this way, every year and continuously, we drag in more people. And I can only encourage everybody here in the room to visit our site, and everybody's invited to contribute. And then in addition to that, we have key partners, what you see in the bottom corner. This is what we would call corporate, corporate partners, for example. And I am actually such. So I'm representing a corporate partner who closed a partnership with HTT two years ago. So we are a key technology provider. We provide the vacuum technology. And actually, from our corporation, we ha I, had a, I haven't signed an individual agreement, but we signed an agreement on behalf of the company. And this way, I was able to bring in more than 20 industry experts from our corporation that Hyperloop would have never been able to hire away from us or from the other way. I mean, they could have gotten one or two. But the entire 20 that you need to set up a technology like this? How we scale? I mean, of course, yes, it's visionary. And yes, there are a lot of doubts. But even today, we develop IP. We develop new systems, which in the end are supposed to form the entire Hyperloop. And part of that is actually being able to be licensed already today. So we have a partnership already with Deutsche Bahn, who took one technology item that we developed and that will now integrate it into the new innovation train that they're developing uh, towards next year. 
The same way, so what I'm saying is a lot of the transportation problems that we have, they're not just prone to the Hyperloop itself, but to the ecosystem. So a lot of what we develop can actually be used in trains, later on on airports, and in other stations. So for the entire mile-to-mile -mile end experience, almost there. So this is what I just mentioned. We filed already, um, as you saw in the video, um, to build a five-mile prototype in California. We have signed a letter of agreement um, to develop the Hyperloop in Slovakia. And we're negotiating as we speak, and this is why Biba couldn't be here, with um, quite a few other countries, regions, cities, and countries and nations who need, who are in dire need of a new infrastructure. So, this is the Hyperloop.